we've identified uh, certain components that seem to exist in almost every trailer. As, as independent filmmakers, you will probably be cut in the trailer either with your editor, yourself, an editor friend of, of the movie, or not the director. We love directors, but again, directors, if, when they get involved with, an, with editing a trailer, they tend to want to keep the good stuff out because they don't want it to be given away. Whereas a marketing person would say, no, let's put the good stuff in. We'll keep some of it out, but a little bit of it in just to make sure that we're getting everybody's attention. Yeah, I would add to another director famous move is to put in all the most beautiful shots that you're so in love with as a director that maybe I'd going to sell the movie as much, but it's, yeah. you know, that really great dolly shot or, or the crane shot, but you definitely good to have somebody come in and say, it's gorgeous, let's save it for the film. Now, trailers are rooted in a traditional three-act structure. I mean, we have a, a download for that, but uh, you want to take them yeah. through it rather quickly? So we've identified uh, certain components that seem to exist in almost every trailer. It, this doesn't matter if it's a Marvel movie or a tiny independent documentary. There's Well, documentary is a little different, but yeah. tiny independent fiction film. So here's what those beats are. First of all, promise of the genre. We talked about this before. Each genre has a different thing that the audience is looking for. So, for example, if you're cutting a trailer for comedy, got to have that comedy. Lots of different kinds of comedy. Central conflict. What's the main conflict in the movie? Who's against who? Is it 40-year-old virgin, the guy that just wants to not be a virgin anymore? That's obviously the central conflict. Also a fantastic title, by the way. A great poster. Yes. <laughs> just a really strong marketing campaign all around. You want to have in your trailer an escalation of conflict. So you identify, okay, this is the primary conflict, but just when you thought that was gonna get boring, it goes up a notch. There's usually a thematic question. What's at stake? What's this movie actually about? This is extremely important in dramas. We often see in trailer a turning point, a moment when a character learns a new piece of information or somebody betrays them, and it's sort of that gasp moment. A plot tease. This is just, hey, you gotta come see the film if you wanna find out what's gonna happen. Cliffhanger. This is really important. Russell mentioned trailers are three-act structures, but not in the same way that movies are. They're not, you don't want a trailer. This is actually, you guys probably have seen trailers like this that drive you crazy, where they tell you everything in the movie, what the conflict is and how it resolves. And you say, well, great, <laughs> no need to buy a ticket. Yeah, okay. so you stop at two and a half acts. Yeah, yes, exactly. You want to, you basically want to stop before you answer the question, what's going to happen, and leave the audience wanting so that they have to see the film. Montages are very common in trailers. You see a lot of that that accomplishes a lot of storytelling. Even if the montage isn't in the movie, you can create one for the trailer. I love this concept. It's called a button. This is so common. You almost will never see an animation trailer without a button. And a button is after the title card comes comes on, there's one more little thing. <laughs> ah, here he is! 